or an agreement, whatever you want to call that document, right. parties who are not people who are not At parties the to the agreement. Right. That property owner who is responsible for those real estate taxes is not a party to this agreement. You or somebody whoever wrote this made the real estate owner a party to the agreement because there's benefits in there that would accrue to the real estate owner or, quite frankly, with your definition, the real estate property owner would be the one who's going to pay the brunt of the taxes and your organization gets the, the lesser tax out of the total. There's no question about that. Not at all. The real estate owner is not a party to this agreement and there should be no reference to that in there. We do. Uh, Chairman, what was, Chairman, what was, sorry. What was that signed? This was 20, What's the date? 2015. 2015. August 2015. Oh, one month August before you joined. I think it was signed at Lincoln Village. Remember when they used no, to have meetings? Not. No, it wasn't. It was right here. It was right here. It was signed. Yeah. Uh, look, and I, I, was I will already say, Carol never agreed that I, and you made this reference before. You had objections too, because I remember coming in when I got the call saying they were signing it. And I would stop in your office to let you know they were signing it because I knew they had objections. To, I mean, there was a, a disagreement between you and them. And the fundamental difference that they had at the time was just what you said, that they didn't, that, that the, you would have issues with the real estate portions of it. Absolutely. It's it's not not it, and I, I don't know the internal workings. But that's what your guidance was to the board. And the board went ahead and signed it. And we relied on it. I relied on what the board did. And I put deals together based on that. And now you're telling me I can't rely on a commitment made by the town of Dayton. Mr. Lucini, and what I'm telling you is everything you've said to us tonight has been said to us by the owner developer of the first one. I he have nothing to do with that. The, I know that. He made all the same points. He made all the same arguments. He talked about bringing in lawyers and all that. And I said to him, just like I'm saying to you tonight. But if he better, if he. This is the position of the town of Dighton right now. Two positions. How to handle personal property taxes on a pilot agreement and how to handle real estate taxes under a pilot agreement. All right? I'm just telling you that now. I suggested that somebody in his office located in Massachusetts get in touch with Mass DOR. That was the gist of everything this town has done. That's the reason for the position we've taken on these two. If, D as I said, DOR calls the shots, period. When I got involved in this in 2015 is when I started to see the problems. But I still said, We'll need to work through it. We've got to look at the procedures. And if we can get it all straightened out, we will take it to town meeting. I will make the motions. I will get up and defend it. I asked Mrs. Beauregard, please be there as my resource. But I told her what my presentation would be and to make sure it was correct. And she said, go ahead. That's OK. I'll be there. All right? That was for the first one. But as I said, we were in full agreement of what the first one meant as far as personal property and real estate. The gentleman who owns it, after it was voted at town meeting, disagreed. But he has reached an agreement with the property owner mm -hmm. to take care of the, person, the real estate taxes. That's got nothing to do with this town. All this town is doing on the first pilot that's been approved, the assessors send a personal property tax to the owner of the pilot, uh, the solar project, and sends the real estate tax bill to the property owner. And somehow they worked it out, so now the property owner is getting and, and reimbursed. Which, and by the way, the pilot agreement that they have is what he's paying on his personal property tax. Okay, taxes. and I can, I can tell you that the owners of these two projects, there's significant money involved, significant more than that small project on William Street, okay? Mm -hmm. Much more money, they are not willing to do that. And they are going to insist that we take this forward and confirm that this is a valid agreement mm -hmm. and that the town of Dighton honor its agreements. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you that I'll work out anything you want for the wording to change the format. 
but I can't make the total payment amount exceed what your Board of Selectmen agreed to. Before these two companies got involved, who was going to own these? There was always anticipated that we would sell it to a large entity that would own it long term. But Mr. Lucini, what I'm saying to you right now is, right. I don't know how many, must be close to two years we've had this go around about these two projects. Sure. You have given me personally, in front of Mrs. Beauregard, a litany of names. The latest two are the ones you mentioned tonight. I didn't mention them purposely because I didn't know if they were still valid. Sure. But, so I want you to understand whether we're talking about smaller owners, smaller companies that right. would buy these, or these giants of industry, right. the position of the town is the same. We got nowhere else to go because DOR has told us what we have to do. But I think you do because that current that is current based upon today and not based upon 2015 when you sign these. That's our that's our position. That's the position of the attorneys. So so as I said to the the, the gentleman on. Pilot uh, agreement number one, mm -hmm. okay? This is the position of the town. Because he wanted to bring his lawyer talk to I. I says, no, no, <laughs> we're not gonna have lawyers talking. This is what the town is dealing with. Okay, but I can't be held accountable for what some guy agreed to that I have nothing to do with. I'm just telling you the facts that I have in front of me, okay? And I'm authorized to do this with you up to what the document says. I'm authorized to fulfill what's in the four corners of this agreement, mm -hmm. okay? I will make that happen, and you will, get your, you will get your million dollars, okay? But I'm telling you emphatically, that million dollars would not have happened if you had insisted that real estate got added to personal property. And the, the ironic part about this is the tax that you're trying to collect now on the commercial value, it only exists because we built the Except. solar rays. Otherwise, it would still be chapter land. Except you needed the pilot agreement in order to have the financial Correct. backing in place. Mm -hmm. Rest assured, if you were looking at this property and could not get a pilot agreement with the town of Dighton, there would have been other solar developers out there that said, hey, they were looking at this in Dighton, they can't get a pilot agreement. We don't need a pilot agreement. Let's get in touch with that property owner and we wouldn't be having this conversation tonight. I respectfully disagree. As a, I do this for a living. I disagree with that, but okay. Because what we found in this town, I've lost track of how many we got, mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact, we just had another proposal for the landfill, because we had one of those before, and that didn't go anywhere. And that had nothing to do with a pilot agreement. But what I'm saying to you is, even though the solar arena has changed and state laws have changed, there are still companies looking to put solar in Dighton. That's true. So how do we go forward? You know the position of the town. You don't agree with the position of the town, and it doesn't sound like you want to make an arrangement to uh, take care of property, real, real estate. estate taxes for the property owner. Right. You're going to have to do what you're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I have mean, one, I have I'm not looking question. to generate lawsuits by the same token. There is no way. It, I'm, I not, going I'm not going to be suing you. It's not me. No, I'm here trying no, to no, solve no, it. No, no, no. And what I'm saying to you is, I'm not looking to generate lawsuits, but by the same token, I'm the one that's got to get up and sell this. And based on everything I have been told, the training we've taken, the people we've met with, seeing what happened with, with pilot agreement number mm -hmm. one, there is no way I would agree to what this amendment says tonight. And this, Mr. Lucini, this goes back to what we talked about almost a, probably a year ago. Nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. if, if anything, Mrs. Beauregard and I go into that training that DOI provided, and rest assured that workshop had a lot, lot, lot of discussion of pilot agreements. As of today, if, but not 2015. As of anything, it has, it has, in my opinion, bolstered the town's position. And I just want to tell you something else. Since I don't know how long, many years, 10, 12 years, I've lost track. I've been a member of the Mass Municipal Association Policy Committee on Energy and the Environment. We've been talking about solar energy when it was just a light bulb in somebody's head, no pun intended. We followed all these things. The committee has taken action to either support or not support changes in the law, you know, that, that, the cap on this and remove the cap and let them do. 
We followed it through and through and through, okay? I have an opportunity to talk to people from around the country mm -hmm. uh, as far as we have presented. People around the state, hey, what are you doing in your town, mm -hmm. okay? And the most recent one was the training that we went to and then the people, the local people who deal with solar farms on a regular basis and of the ones that came in here, there was, there was only one pilot agreement. But we heard about a lot of solar farms, including people that, when I say people, communities that won't touch pilot agreements, okay? So I just leave it at that. My, I personally feel, since I'm the one that insisted that this go to town meeting and I'm the one that's gonna do it, I don't have any place to go. Okay. All right, so uh, let me think about this. I will talk to the the owners of the sites and basically pass it to them. Mm -hmm. um, I believe they're going to reach out to you and request for a meeting with council, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Before you go, I just have one question, just curiosity. If we find out through whatever this process that's going to be um, that it really <coughs> isn't valid, the the agreement, what happens to the solar farm that's there? If it really is invalid, mm -hmm. uh, that won't be my decision. The current owners will have to figure out how they're going to manage the economics of it. If, if, you know, right now a bolt of lightning says <laughs> invalid, they will proceed to, if it's not completely mm -hmm. all done with all the permitting and online and all that, they can finish it. Mm -hmm. They have an option to come back to the Board of Selectmen and say we need to negotiate a pilot agreement that is going to get passed at town meeting. Mm -hmm. We can, if, if this were declared invalid, we can negotiate a new pilot agreement. Mr. Lucini knows exactly what the town's position is. If he wants to negotiate a new pilot agreement, he already knows where we're coming from. He knows the position of the Board of Assessors. Mm -hmm. He'll know the position of the full Board of Selectmen when the agreement is drafted and put together and we sit down and hash it out, he'll know exactly the entire board, and once it is in that final state, mm -hmm. number one, it will not be signed by the Board of Selectmen until it is approved at town meeting, Correct. and that was the reason why I asked for the new signature page, because going forward, until it's voted at town meeting, we don't sign it. It's not going to be signed sure. by the Board of Selectmen, <clears throat> and if it takes a period of time, the selectmen who negotiate it may not be the ones that sign it because after it's approved at town meeting, it will be the board that is sitting at the time mm -hmm. it's voted at town yeah. meeting. Sure. Let me so ask, we don't get into the... Let me ask you the other way. Mm -hmm. If this is found to be valid, a valid agreement, and it's enforceable, and there's motions to compel, then what will you do? Will you continue to fight it and pay legal fees, or will you honor the, what we believe is a valid agreement? The first thing that would have to happen is there would have to be some kind of legal action ordering the town mm -hmm. to do such and such. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. At which time we would be talking to council, we would right. be talking to the lawyers at deal. Right. I'm at, what, I'm asking, the whole bit. what I'm asking you to do sooner rather than later is please give this to your council and ask them very straightforward, is this enforceable or not? They've already reviewed it on the, let me call it the short side. That means they're not being sued. We, the town's not being sued at the right. time. Town Council is aware of the information that we have gotten. Yep. They're, they're aware of the whole process because initially there was a disagreement on even taking it to town meeting between Town Council and the town moderator. The town moderator took the time. As I said, he's an attorney. He took the time. He did the research. He came to a selectman's meeting. He requested to be placed on the agenda. He came in here to a meeting and he outlined the conditions under which, conditions set by the DOR, that under which he would allow pilot agreements to be on the warrant and acted on. That's how we got that one mm -hmm. approved, okay? As I said, the other two got tabled because we didn't have all the information, okay? But there is, a, there is a situation where town council said, I don't think you have to. The town moderator is meticulous in running a town meeting. I think everyone would agree with that. He did the research, he did the steps, he brought it in multi-pages, and he covered it. And once he did that, we knew 
we can go forward with the town meeting. We knew exactly what the procedure was. We knew exactly what he would allow and what he expected from this board when it got to town meeting and how it was going to be handled. So that much has already been done. Rest assured, if town, uh, excuse me, the town moderator in all his research had found that taking it to town meeting, uh, you don't have to do that, or you, whatever. You've told us that. But because of the, he's meticulous. The way he runs a town meeting, he wants things to go smoothly. He doesn't want motions on the floor that everyone's looking at one another saying, can we do this? Is this correct? Whatever. He did the research, he educated himself, and then he came in and educated the board on how this was going to go. And that's how we get the first one passed. So anyhow. OK, well, I will, uh, I'll get back to you with what they're what their next step is they'd like to do. In the okay. meantime, whatever you can do to determine if this is you know, uh, enforceable or not from your perspective, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. If we can shortcut this whole thing some way, that'd be great. Mr. Lucini, I don't want to make you think that there's, I'm not going to give you any false information or pretenses. You've heard the presentation tonight from the town of Dighton. Okay. I don't intend to dig any more. What we will do is, if Legal action is taken against the town. We will have to act on behalf of the town. But nothing tonight has come before this board, and certainly not before me, that would convince me I can now go to a town meeting and attempt to sell this to the people of Dighton. Absolutely not. I wouldn't, if I were the only person that had a vote, or if I was sitting in the audience, I wouldn't vote for this the way it is right now, and I certainly wouldn't sign it. Okay, I understand. So thank, thank you. you for coming in. Thank, thank you. you, Rob. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Can we take a break so I can get a glass of water, Yes, please? I need to use the restroom cable. We need, we need to declare a brief recess. Oh, we'll five minutes. Five minutes. We'll be back shortly.
15, Karen, we're back in session. Thank you, Selectman Goulart. Okay. Next on the agenda is new business. Review, discuss, and act. Recommendation for hire from the town clerk. Okay, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to table this because, um, first of all, um, Mr. Taylor is not here tonight, mm -hmm. and he hasn't had a chance to look at anything. So I did speak to the town clerk and tell her that although she asked us to act on this tonight, mm -hmm. um, that I was not prepared to vote on it. Mm -hmm. And my recommendation will be tabled to the next meeting, which is going to be the 29th, I believe, because we don't meet next Wednesday night. Okay. And that's the only reason for tabling it. Mm -hmm. She wanted the start to be Monday, and I said the appointment won't be made. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Taylor should be here. Mm -hmm. So, and I think by that night we're going to have some others to appoint because mm -hmm. we have several vacancies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So my motion is to table. I will step down in second. This is a no discussion motion, so that's that. We'll take this back up on November 29th when our chairman returns. Now, Selectman Goulart, would whoop, you? Whoop, whoop. Now you get to call the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All those in favor of the table say aye. 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 Oppose. The ayes have it. Now, would you like to continue the announcement? Okay. Gee, this is a short list. All the <laughs> all the events are over for the time being. Uh, town Hall will be closed on Wednesday, November 22nd, and there will be no selectmen's meeting that evening. But, however, I just want to remind you of what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Town Hall offices will be closed with the exception of the town clerk, who must be open under state law, Wednesday, November 22nd, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. to accept any initiative petitions for the state election in 2018, and she will be open for any other town business. So if you need a uh, birth certificate or something that the town clerk could, uh, could uh, issue, uh, that office will be open, and it's because of the statute requiring her to be open. Um, the Dighton Lights On ceremony will be held on November 25th, that's the Saturday after Thanksgiving, at Dighton Town Hall from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. Refreshments will be available, and there will be a 50-50 raffle. The Dighton Community Food Bank will be accepting donations at the event as well. And as you all know by now, it's non-perishable food, uh, paper products, cereal, canned goods, things of that nature. Uh, Dighton Food Bank distribution will be held on Saturday, November 18th, 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., the lower level of Dighton Town Hall. Senator Mark Pacheco, our representative, will be at the Dighton Council on Aging, 300 Lincoln Avenue, North Dighton, on Tuesday, November 21st, from 1 to 2 p.m. To make an appointment, please call 508-823-0095. I've got a couple of... I got, I got I got one other um, announcement, mm -hmm. and... Um, during July, you heard me say a number of times that the Pan Mass Challenge, the bike ride, Pan Mass Jimmy Fun, would occur the first weekend in August. Mm -hmm. And th thank you all, obviously, for supporting the riders and everything else. I got an email uh, this week from the, uh, I'll call him the captain of my team. It's only two people. It's, it's Eric Hella and his son. This is the message that he sent. Dear friends and family, last night, the Pan Mass Challenge set yet another astounding charitable fundraising record, presenting PMC 2017 check for $51 million. Wow. That's right, count the zeros, to the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Your generous contributions in support of Team Hellers on Wheels and every other team that got supported. Participation in the ride contributed to this phenomenal gift. 100% of that sum will make its way to the labs and clinics of Dana-Farber where brilliant researchers and caregivers will continue their relentless work developing cutting edge therapies and treatment protocols towards the ultimate goal of conquering cancer in all of its hideous, devastating forms. So I believe the goal this year was $48 million, 
And in any case, $51 million was raised. So to everybody who stood out there or volunteered or gave out water or made sandwiches or were at Dighton Rehoboth, I just stood along the road and waved. You're part of this $51 million that humankind will benefit from. But mm -hmm. that's remarkable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give this to, to Karen Absolutely. so she can make uh, reference to that. I want to thank you for reading that. Uh, my grandfather, just a brief story. This isn't story time, don't worry. Uh, my grandfather, um, he had stage uh, three or four uh, bone cancer. Mm -hmm. He went to Dana Farber and they cured him. Mm -hmm. So that money mm -hmm. will, I promise you, will be very, very well spent and well invested. So thank you for reading that. That's amazing. I, feel, I couldn't believe 51 million. That's I always crazy. wait to find out, and I always want to hope they get their goal. Mm -hmm. But I think this was two or three million mm -hmm. above the goal. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Power of the people. Yep. Do we have any correspondence this evening? Okay. Do we have any reports, Selectman Gula? Yes. Last Thursday. Uh, was the fall meeting of the Greater, Greater Attleboro Tartan Home Consortium. This is the group that I report on twice a year. This is the group that gets money from housing and urban development to assist first time home buyers and people who want or uh, need assistance uh, rehabbing rental housing. So, in Program year 2016, the entire $90,000 was used to help first-time home buyers. There was one in Attleboro, two in Dighton, eight in Taunton, and one in Rainham. Now, the rehab program, they spent $310,390 rehabbing a rental housing. There were over 45 uh, requests people on the list. However, there are certain qualifications that have to be met. And one of the big qualifications for rehabilitation of rental properties is the amount of equity that the owner has in it. So you just can't buy a, let's say, an older rental unit and apply for assistance. You've got to have equity in it. Money that is given out as assistance to rehab rental property must be paid back when the property is sold. First time home buyers can get up to $10,000 that can be used for closing costs and down payment assistance. And, and there are obviously qualifications to get that money. However, if you stay in the property, and I'm not sure if it's, I'm thinking it's five years, it could be less. If you live in that home for that period of time, you don't have to pay that money back. By the same token, if you buy what we call an affordable unit, for example, in a 40B development, there are restrictions on what you can sell that house for. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I just make you aware, um, Dighton residents have taken advantage of this. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, at the meeting, because we used up all $90,000 in program year 2016, uh, we voted to take some money out of uh, rehabbing rental property because we didn't spend all of that. And you have a certain number of years to spend the money, and if you don't spend it, it goes back to uh, housing and urban development, which is a federal organization. So anyhow, we voted to increase the money in the uh, closing cost down payment for first to home buyers. And that budget this year is now 110000 So it's up from 90000 So money is available. If, you're, if you think you may qualify, uh, you just get in touch with the Greater Attleboro Taunton Home Consortium. They're on the corner of School Street and I'm not sure what the other street is, but it's right on School Street, right across from the, I think it's the oldest fire station in the city of Taunton. 
They will put you in touch with Pro Home, who will explain everything about first time home buyers. And if you're thinking of purchasing or if you own rental housing that you would like assistance to rehab, just get in touch with them because there's somebody in the office that can go through that whole process and advise you what you're eligible for. Um, right now, 2017, there are only three applications that, have, that are out there, one for Middleborough, one for Dighton, and one for Taunton. So even if you're not sure, take the time to see if you're eligible, because it's certainly worth it. But um, the rest of it was just pretty much the, the boilerplate things, approving uh, minutes and things like that. But uh, this is definitely a very good program. Absolutely. So, so that was the, uh, the meeting that I went to. Any other reports? Uh, well, we both can report on the veterans' breakfast. Absolutely. And the dedication of the very, Grand Costa Memorial. Very nice so time. Go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so we attended, uh, we were fortunate enough to attend the veterans' breakfast. We were also fortunate enough. Uh, to be in the presence of former Selectman Menjis, which is very nice to see him, mm -hmm. um, as well as our other veterans. Um, I didn't get an exact assessment of the room, but off the top of my head, uh, there were several foreign conflicts represented um, in the room. Uh, Korea, Desert Storm, who um, I met a uh, lady soldier. Um, Vietnam? Yep, uh, Desert Storm. Desert, first Desert Storm, yep. and then the second one. Yep. Uh, Yes, Several Vietnam vets. Absolutely. World War II, Mr. Borden. He was there. Yes, yes. yes. So it was, it was a very nice time. Um, I believe it was catered by Alice's, is that correct? Yes. Always. And it was, um, uh, it was very everything great. was provided by the Dighton Lions Club. Absolutely. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for always inviting us. We will always be there to support our troops. Um, and we appreciate all that you do. It was a very nice time. Um, the park dedication ceremony, um, which was hosted by the chairman of Parks and, Recre uh, Parks and Recreation Commission, uh, Timothy Rines, uh, was actually very well attended. Yes, it was. It was a very cold day, as you know. At least the wind stopped. <laughs> yeah. We were bundled up, um, but it was a very nice time. Very emotional as well. Yes. Um, the uh, lovely family of uh, former selectmen, uh, Costa was present. Um, even his grandson uh, was there. Um, he gave a speech. Um, it was very emotional, um, but I, I could see how appreciative they were, how, how special that park is to them and to the town. Um, so it was a very nice, very nice time. Yes, um, thanks to, um, uh, on the breakfast, thank you to Pastor Jack for allowing us to use uh, our Father's Family Church facilities. Uh, thanks to Tom Ferry for uh, helping with the setup for the uh, park dedication. Um, I believe uh, Arujo's Dighton Garden Club mm -hmm. contributes some of the shrubbery uh, mm -hmm. that was there. Um, the uh, thank you to Senator Pacheco and Representative uh, Haddad mm -hmm. for bringing the greetings from the uh, state. Uh, it, uh, it was really nice. Uh, following that, uh, there were light refreshments downstairs, and it was a chance to kind of chat and catch up with some of, the, uh, some of Frank Costa's family that probably we haven't seen in a while. I know his niece was here, a farmer, a counselor in Taunton, mm -hmm. uh, Sherry Costa Hanlon. Yep. Uh, so it was, very, it was very well attended. It was moving. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to commend former selectman uh, Menjis. He was the keynote speaker at the veterans' breakfast. Always good. <laughs> and uh, it was somber mm -hmm. at times. It was uh, brought a tear to the eye at times, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. But it was very. Uh, I would say hot moving and very appropriate for uh, concerning some of the recent events that have happened Absolutely. and the dealing with uh, returning veterans and how they have, uh, some of them have problems that don't seem to be addressed socially, I'll put it that way. Or adequately. That's for sure. But anyhow, um, 
it was a busy weekend, but it was it was good. Rewarding. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Despite that cold. <laughs> <laughs> so before we move on, um, I know um, I may have mentioned this before. I had the pleasure of meeting with our fire chief over the weekend. Um, on Sunday, we had a very nice discussion about um, just what he's thinking about for the future of Dighton Fire Department. Oh, good. Uh, I have prepared a report. He has given me my edits, um, the edits, excuse me. Um, so I will be forwarding, forwarding it to uh, the Board of Selectmen. Um, we can discuss it um, at a meeting in the future. Very okay? good. Very good. Next. Do we have any acknowledgments today? We don't. Okay. I'd like to acknowledge everybody uh, who came out, as Selectman Goulart said, to the Veterans Breakfast um, and to the park dedication ceremony. Um, you are the foundation of our town and the glue that holds it together, and we appreciate that very much. Approval of minutes. Do we have any minutes to approve? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I... Mm -hmm. We do or we don't? We don't. Oh. Sorry. Well, it says approval. I know, I'm looking that. at warrants and I'm saying, well, Mr. Chairman. That's a trick. It's a trick. She wanted to see if we were making sure you're paying attention at the end of the meeting. Okay. <laughs> we passed, Karen. Uh, approval of the warrants. Mr. Chairman, I move that warrant 28-18 in the amount of $82,919.97 payroll. Warrant 20B-18 in the amount of 10000 $747.20 and warrant 20C-18 in the amount of $241,054.03, the last two being accounts payable dated November 15th, be approved. I'll step down and second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And I'll entertain motions to adjourn if there's no further business. Mr. Berkwin, you're good? Okay, absolutely. Welcome back. We haven't yeah, seen you I know, for a we while. Missed you. <laughs> absolutely. Wouldn't be a meeting without you, Mr. Berkwin. Uh, I make a motion that we adjourn. I will step down and second. Any further discussion? All I want to say is 